Hey guys, HackerSI here from MMOMimic.com. Gonna make a video for you and show you just how easy it is to uh, download and install the bot and uh, how to get it running. So the first thing you're gonna want to do is open your browser. You can go to AFKBots.com. You can go to the forum. This video is for the WoW bots, so we're gonna go to the WoW bot download section. I'm gonna pick the elite bot for this video, which is our leveling bot. I'm gonna download it. As you can see, it's downloading right now. Cool, so that's done. I'm gonna find that file. Now go ahead and make a new folder on your desktop. Drag that install file to the folder. I'm gonna unpack and run the bot. Now we have all the install files. Awesome. Next thing you're gonna want to do is open World of Warcraft. Make sure you do this as administrator. Make sure you don't have any firewall or antivirus software running, or it may block the bot's ability to connect. I'm going to resize this. I'm going to drag this off screen for a second and log in. I'm going to log into the character selection screen. As you can see, I'm now at the character selection screen. I'm just going to go ahead and make a uh, something simple. I'm going to pick a human. And I think I'm going to go with a warrior. No, let's make a mage. Mages are fun. And let's name him Test Please. That's sad. Alright, well then let's name him Cooperish. Alright. Make sure all your add-ons are disabled. Now we're ready to open the buy. This is the file we're gonna run to start the Elite Bot. Go ahead and right-click it and run as administrator. you're going to see this interface. The first thing you're going to want to do is activate your card. This link right here is going to open this. The code that you purchased will go right here. It's going to look just like this. The password that you want to use, you put right here. You pick that. Password again. Put your email. And type in the four-digit verification code that you see right here. And then click activate. You see blue text down here that says the code was successfully activated. After that, you're ready to use it. Go ahead and paste your code there. Remember. Put your password there. Remember. Go ahead and click login on the bot. As you can see, down here we got the data successfully retrieved from WoW. That's great. And go ahead and enter the game. And this is a, uh, a new account, so it's going to take a second to uh, get into the game. As soon as we get in the game, I will skip all the uh, entrance cinematics. I don't need that, thank you. Alrighty. We are now in the world of Warcraft. I'm going to go ahead and set my key bindings to default, just to make sure. Now then, on the config tab, this is the first uh, basic tab in the bot. 
you can go ahead and pick a class. I'm a mage, so obviously I'm going to pick a mage. And let's see, it looks like it starts me off with just Frostfire Bolt. It's fine. So, I will pick uh, Fire Spec. I don't have any of this stuff yet, but uh, as you can see, you have options for which specs you want to play. Um, if you want to use wands, if uh, which types of armor you want to use, and if you would like to initiate combat with Ice Lance. All the classes work basically the same way. They all have options based on their buffs, uh, when you would like to heal, so forth and so on. Which forms of druids you would like to use, when you would like to use special abilities. For now, we're going to go with the mage. This is a path tab. This is where you'd be loading all your paths. I'm going to use circular paths. This tab right here is where you load the path that you want the bot to follow while you kill things. This is how the bot levels. Right here. This is where you load the path that you want the bot to follow to go to town and repair. That would be this dude right here. third is the primary revive path, which is your resurrection path. This is where you want to load paths so you can resurrect when you die. The combat tab. This is where you can configure how you would like the bot to rest and when to start attacking. So, uh, HP above percent attack. I want to rest until 99% from my mana and my health. So when I stop the rest, I will always rest until 99%, which is perfect. HP below, you percent use food. This is where I want to put the value to tell the bot when to start resting. I'm going to start resting at 55% from mana and food, or health. Um, I don't have health potions, but I'm just going to put 15 for each of these, so if I happen to pick up a health potion, that's at what percent the bot will use it. Um, I want the bot to go back to the vendor when my inventory is full, so I'm going to enable that option. I would like to attack, uh, let's see, four levels below my character and two levels above for now, so I don't really want to die. I'm going to go ahead and change my attack range to 35. 35 yards is, uh, yeah, that's got a 40 yard range on it, so 35 is pretty accurate. The loot settings, um, latency, I'm going to give myself uh, about 10 seconds latency. That just makes sure that the bot interfaces with the game correctly when you're looting. And I want to loot after combat, so I pick that option. Um, you can skin, herb, and mine, and also open treasure boxes. Um, herbing and mining will be a secondary function to leveling. The bot will always try and kill mobs first. Um, skinning is a primary function. It will skin after every mob it kills. The alarm tab basically just tells you uh, options for what you would like to be alarmed about. Um, voice alert is much nicer than PC beeper. Um, and basically if you want to be alerted about arriving to town, um, the bot is stuck, uh, your bot has died, um, your code has ran out, your food or water is empty, your gear is broken, so forth and so on. You can enable these options, and the bot will alert you when these happen. The Sell Items tab works in conjunction with this tab. It's the Town Path. This is the path the bot follows to repair, and this is the tab where you configure that to sell. So you would enable Auto Sell Items. If you wanted to add specific items you did not want to sell, like, for instance, your hearthstone or your food and water, you would add the names there. And then NPC name, this paste name button will grab the name from the NPC in-game, so check it out. I'm going to click him and click paste name. Boom, got his name. Pretty easy, huh? The buy items tab, you can enable buying, and you can paste the name of an NPC that can sell things, and you can input the position and quantity of certain items if you would like to buy them, like food or water. 
the mail tab. You can mail uh, specific amounts of gold or goods. You can decide to mail first or sell later depending on the order that your bot will uh, return to town. You can enable mailing items and you can tell it who to mail to and what quality above that you would like to sell. These two tabs denote what not to mail and what to mail. And you can also mail gold. You can keep a certain amount of gold here and the person to mail gold too. This is the dungeon follow tab. What this does is allows you to not only follow other players while inside dungeons, so you can queue up for a group and once you're in the dungeon you can follow the tank, but you can also follow other players or other bots and level in a group. So for example you could refer a friend your account up and you could have two bots follow each other and they would level very very fast. But basically you just follow a group member and attack, obtain the name the same way we did with the vendors, how far you would like to stay away from them, and the person you want to focus the target of. You can do the same thing with the obtain name button here. So now that we've got that all explained, I'm going to give you a, a basic rundown of how to record a path and get the bot going. Um, I'm going to get away from this area. It's all these. Alright, looks good. So I am going to go to new path. Actually, excuse me, I'm going to go to config. And I'm going to make a new config file. I'm going to call it uh, mage. Now I click. Pick my class. Make a circular path. Looks good, looks good. I want to loot after combat. Now then, I'm going to go ahead and click the new path button and click new path. I'm going to name this Northshire 1 Attack. Now I'm ready to start recording. Click record. And I'm basically just going to run around and make a big looped path. Uh, you don't have to attack anything while you're on your path. You just have to record the actual waypoints. So, do a little bit of running. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the path around the same spot that I started. Click stop. Now I know the path is saved, and it is named Northshire 1 Attack. So I'm going to go into my config, and click Path. I'm going to find that path, Northshire 1 Attack, right all down here at the bottom. I go ahead and hit Save. Under Combat, since these monsters are neutral or yellow, I'm going to click Only Attack. And I'm going to use the paste mob button to add these mobs in. Because they're not naturally aggressive. Now I can hit save. And I've got Frostfire Bolt. I'm going to put it all over my bar just to be sure. Save start. And as you can see, the bot is killing wards. Uh, this is the basic idea behind the bot. Um, it does come with a lot of pre-made paths and patrols. Um, and we also have a uh, premium section of the forums that has quite a few 1 to 80 and 1 to 85 pre-made packs um, so that you can just pretty much load them and uh, and start leveling. Um, the same functions work with the repair path and the resurrect path. Um, for a repair path you would simply record yourself going from anywhere on this path 
to your repair vendor. Resurrection paths work the same way. All you need to do is record yourself walking from the spirit healer to the middle of your grinding path, which would be what we just recorded.